Hi there, everybody. I thought I would um, refer to Karen's slide where she talks about a process of learning and those three important things, awareness, exploration, and application. And because mine kind of reminded me of a story that I had, I thought I would just do it in this format instead of typing text on slides. So I was out walking my dog, Kaylee, this weekend, and it was uh, an evening walk. And it was a starry sky, not this particular starry sky, this is actually over Mount Everest, but um, it was in Guelph, a starry sky. And so as I was looking up on the stars, I kept thinking about an experience that I've had, and it's about 28 years ago now for this experience. We were camping at uh, one of the Ontario parks. I think it was Arrowhead maybe. And one of the interpretive programs that we attended uh, was down on the beach and this camper who ha was in the campground happened to be an astronomer and so he offered to bring his telescope down to the beach one night for a while and he said just bring your binoculars that's all you need and we'll look at the night sky. So we went to this and I had no experience with astronomy but thought it sounded really interesting. It was very cool to be a member of a dozen people or so gathered on the beach and to hear this man's passion for learning about astronomy. So he taught us a little bit about the stars, some of the more common ones to recognize like the Dippers and this one Cassiopeia's chair which has sort of stuck with me for many many years. So that's what I was thinking about how that little bit of awareness that was raised at that time plus the um, opportunity to explore with the right conditions you know you're happy you're you're with people that um, that that are new to you you're camping that sort of joyfulness around that whole experience and then because the sky is above you every night the chance to apply what you learn in that one little situation has meant that that learning stuck with me for all these years. I, I tried to uh, apply it a little more often and get my kids into it. I bought some of those light up the sky books where you shine your flashlight onto it and I was hoping they would share the same joy that I had but they didn't. However, nonetheless, it's it's been an experience that has stuck with me and I've extended a little bit beyond that initial experience but it has stuck with me for a long time. So that got me thinking about other areas of deep learning for me and actually for students as well. And where it really makes sense for me was my years spent in reading recovery training, they called it. So for a couple of years, three years, you worked with a group of teachers and you went really deeply into what it means to teach students to read. And on two levels, I see this as compar comparable to the experience that Karen mentions. First of all, it was my awareness as a teacher that, you know, this, this role of the teacher in teaching folks to read is so critical and, and exploring that over time with a group of people, two or three years, and then applying that day to day as job embedded professional learning was just incredible, the, the deepest experience I've ever had. And then for the students as well. Learning to read is such an experience that's similar to my um, experience with learning about the stars. First of all, there's all this print around you in the world that you're not even aware of, like I was un unaware of all that um, astronomy up there in the, in the sky. And then you have an exploration period and you learn more about it. And if you're given uh, time to practice, you really embed that knowledge. And I think about kids you know how amazing the process is of learning to read. It's not natural. It's something our brain doesn't always do by itself, doesn't usually do by itself, but with um, the right um, guidance you learn to change your view of what you see in the world and you make meaning from it and it lasts forever and hopefully it becomes a joyful process. So what I feel is most important for us as educators, we can't make people do st learn stuff, but how do we create those environments where all of those elements Karen mentioned come together, awareness, exploration, and application, and then I would add, how do we create those environments that even have the additional pieces of passion, purpose, and joy built in, which I think is the piece that really cements learning permanently.